So the next presentation comes from a researcher from the Charité, Soyo Sugata, um, connecting the brain with machines. This is his research focus. Uh, go ahead. Uh, you, you found out that brain control devices cannot only improve quality of life and paralysis, but may soon transform the treatment of brain disorders such as depression, addiction, or dementia. You also received the ERC uh, starting grant, and we are really looking forward to hearing more about your research. Go ahead, please. It's very wonderful to be here tonight. It is estimated that um, more than one billion people on this planet suffer from a disorder of the brain. For example, depression, anxiety, stroke, multiple sclerosis or dementia. But despite all um, tremendous technological progress, we still don't have the tools to tackle brain disorders effectively and without side effects. So in my ERC-funded project, I am developing the next generation neurotechnologies that will improve quality of life and restore brain functions across various brain disorders. The project builds on the latest advances in brain-computer interfaces. So these um, brain-computer interfaces translate brain activity into control commands of a digital device. For example, here you see a patient controlling a prosthetic arm to grasp a coffee and drink. Or you can even use these um, BCIs for controlling several pros prosthetic devices. However, implantation of these microelectrodes entails the risk of infections and bleedings, and there's no certification to use these devices uh, on the long term. And none of these patients have ever used these, uh, these technologies outside of the laboratory in their daily life. So in my research, my team and I, we are developing non-invasive brain-computer interfaces that do not require a surgical procedure. Here you see a number of quadriplegic patients who are all in a wheelchair and who are unable to grasp with their own fingers. They are unable to grasp a book, a cup, or um, a piece of paper. So we have equipped these patients with a neural exoskeleton that would translate their brain activity con associated with the intention to close their fingers into actual closing motions. And here you can see that these patients can securely grasp and manipulate these different objects of daily life and um, restore their hand function. The system could also be used outside of the laboratory. So this gentleman went out to a restaurant and ate for the first time after several years with a fork. We asked the patients what they would like to do with this new ability. And for, there is um, another patient who asked for a plate of potato chips because he hasn't eaten these potato chips for many years on his own. So here you can see in his face how this technology can improve quality of life. Now, we have used this technology also in chronic stroke patients who were unable to move their fingers, sometimes for years or even decades. And after one month of daily training, we were very surprised to see that some of the patients could move their fingers again. And we were, of course, very interested to find out what happened in their brain. And what we found is that the brain activity that was associated with the intention to move the paralyzed fingers reorganized after one month of this daily training, and this reorganization correlated with the clinical improvement. Now, there is no reason to believe that this principle cannot also be used for restoration of other brain functions than movements, for example, memory formation, cognitive control, or emotion regulation. And um, the state-of-the-art brain-computer interfaces on the conceptual level, they translate brain activity into sensory feedback, and the sensory feedback um, influences brain activity. And we have found that this closed loop um, um, leads to functional and structural reorganization of the brain. Now, the next generation brain-computer interfaces, they will also translate brain activity into sensory feedback. But brain activity associated with brain functions like memory formation, emotion, um, regulation or cognitive control. We will um, add adaptive brain stimulation to foster stabilization and improvement of brain function. Now, the big challenge is to identify the neural substrates of these different brain disorders because we can't simply ask someone to be depressed and then stop it like a voluntary movement. So how can we 
understand what these neural substrates are. A possible way is to record brain activity in the millisecond to millisecond range and apply brain stimulation and then observe changes in brain function and behavior. Now this would allow us to understand the causal link between brain activity and brain function or behavior. But of course there's a problem. When we record brain activity in the millisecond to millisecond range and we apply brain stimulation, there are huge artifacts that make it impossible to really read out these physiological responses. Now in, in our ERC project, we have overcome this problem and achieved a breakthrough um, in applying electric stimulation um, non-invasive electric brain stimulation while we could restore millisecond to millisecond brain activity in real time. So that's very important in real time, so we can do this in real time. It's not uh, after processing, but we can do this in real time. And we applied this new technology in, um, for example, an application where we target frontal theta oscillations that are linked to memory formation, um, often, uh, often, um, um, uh, often affected in the elderly or patients with dementia. And when we did this, we could find that indeed millisecond precise targeting of these frontal theta oscillations can improve memory performance in the image or picture recognition task, while um, open loop simulation or non-specific stimulation did not. Now, um, a critical point here is that we have to increase spatial resolution of neuroimaging tools. So these frontal theta uh, oscillations, they are very easy to catch but um, if it comes to other brain functions, very difficult to understand the neural substrates. So here you see the latest generation of quantum sensors. And these quantum sensors can offer non-invasive um, assessment of brain activity at unprecedented spatial resolution. And here in, in Berlin with the um, Physikalisch Technische Bundesanstalt, we're implementing these new sensors into the ERC project. And we'll build the first of its kind quantum BCI closed loop brain stimulation platform. What we also do have is we are developing novel brain stimulation techniques based on temporal interference of magnetic fields that can reach deep into the brain tissue where until now we could only uh, reach with implantation of electrodes. With support of the Berlin Institute of Health, we have filed an international patent on this, on this new um, um, technology and we will implement and validate um, this stimulation in the next two years. Now, of course, if we use, it's very clear, if we use this technology, there are a number of neuroethical um, questions that um, are raised, and um, we, of course, also address them in the project. Now, with this, um, I'd like to conclude that I'm convinced that, um, especially with the support of the ERC, science can exert a profound um, transfor transformative effect on how we treat brain disorders effectively and without side effects. Thank you.